So this is everything you always wanted to know about leaders with sympathetic strings, but we're afraid to ask. Um, this instrument is a new instrument. It began its life in about 1990 or 1991. This is the, when we first started making this type of lira. Uh, so it's almost 30 years old now. And uh, the whole idea behind it was that it's an instrument which you can use to play either in the Cretan style, which means that you have it turning like that to use the bow in a, in a straight, uh, straight movement, or you can use it like in the case of the Kemenche or Lira Politici, the Lira of Istanbul, where uh, this part of the hand does not necessarily touch this, so that gives you a lot more freedom of the left hand to move into diff different positions. The traditional Cretan way of playing, the Lira is held this way, so the instrument is then wedged between this part of the hand and this here, so you are very, very adept at moving in and out of the strings with individual finger movements, but you are unfortunately unable to move into other positions very effectively. So you do gain certain things by this way of holding it, and you gain other things by holding it this way, which means that the hand can now move freely. In the case of the Turkish lira, the Kemenche, it's held on the two legs like that, so this hand is entirely free which gives you a lot of freedom to move in other positions apart from first position. So that was the whole idea for this particular design, was to be able to use on the same instrument techniques from the Kemenche, the Lira Politici, and the Cretan Lira, and also other Lira styles as well. The whole idea of sympathetic strings is reasonably, well, in, at least to this degree is new to the Cretan Lira. Old Cretan Liras, especially from the province of Khanya, would have anything between one and four sympathetic strings. Uh, I myself remember Lira players in the region of Apokoronas who used to have one sing sympathetic string underneath the middle string tuned to the note Mi. Um, but this idea of having many of them, of course, is quite new. There are Bulgarian liras known as gadulkas, which have as many as 12 sympathetic strings in a very different order than this. But this one, what we decided to do was each string has a number of sympathetic strings. This first string here, on this particular uh, instrument, it has five. So what you do is you tune the string which is highest in position, which means the one which is closest to the playing string. You want it tuned to the lowest possible note, and the string which is on the bottom, which means that it's closest to the soundboard, should be tuned to your highest note. The reason for this is that you don't want to put too much pressure on the bridge so that it doesn't uh, do damage to the soundboard. So the strings which are at the bottom here are tighter and they're at a much smaller angle with the bridge, whereas the ones at the top here are tuned lower with less tension because they have a, a more acute angle. So, because the fingers go between the strings at a slight angle like that, the strings also go at a slight angle. You can see that on the bridge, that they're actually, they have a slight angle like that. And that means that your fingers go between here. The back of your finger does in fact touch the sympathetic string, but that's not a problem because when you're playing here, you are not playing these notes here, which belong to the first string. So underneath each string, the notes are tuned to the notes played on that particular string. So, this first string is La, we then have La, C, uh, B flat, B, uh, C, Do sharp, and a very high Re, which is missing at the present time. So, you can tune those any way you like, you can tune them to whatever pitch you like, you can tune them to microtones if you wish, uh, depending on the scale or the makam which you're going to play. And also because you have the same notes but in a different octave uh, next to the third string, you can tune the notes to one series, one set of microtones in one octave and another set in another octave, if you wish to. Underneath the second string, we have Mi, uh, we have a uh, Re here, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, and G. Um, underneath this string here. So, as, again, the lowest tuned note is in the highest position, closest to the playing string. 
and the highest tune note is in the lowest position, closest to the soundboard, so we don't put pressure on the bridge. That's very, very important. On the outside of the third string, we have, a loop, we have room for a lot more strings. So we have um, one set of strings here, which is Re, D, C sharp. Sorry, uh, D, C sharp, C, B, B flat, A, another A, a second uh, A, uh, G sharp, G, and then I have two strings tuned here on the edge to E and F of the middle string, and those strings <coughs> use a small little Javari bridge here. So those strings are actually attached back here, and they go over this small Javari bridge. So they actually have what's called double Javari, which is here and here. This is something which I'd seen on the sitars of Nikhil Banerjee, who used to have a double Javari for his Chikari strings. And it's very effective on these liras. So that's the way that we set up the strings on these instruments. You can make small variations to this. I mean, this is just the general principle, is that the lowest tuned string is in the highest position, the highest tuned string in the lowest position. And then from here outside, you can do more or less what you like. Although I, th I find that it's useful to start on the outside here with Sol, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, and D. I find that to be the most convenient for this particular instrument. Uh, that's about all there is to it, really. That's, uh, that's the basic information about this particular type of lira. And uh, the basic idea of this instrument was not to replace some other instrument, either the Cretan lira or any other. It's, it's an instrument which you can use to play various styles of music, uh, either in the Cretan idiom or, without, or outside of it in other idioms and things like that. It's fairly flexible and quite adaptable to many different musical styles. If you use the Javari system here, it has a very characteristic sound, which if you prefer not, you can have it like this one here, which is, uh, sorry, this one, this one here, which is without the Javari, so it has a, a very, uh, all it has is a sound like a sort of an extra sort of a reverb chamber or something on it. So that's information about these layers. <laughs>